Good afternoon, Robert Scribbler. It is September 4th, 2018. Thank you for joining me for another climate change and clean energy video blog. I hope you all had a, an excellent Labor Day. I took the day off yesterday, so mea culpa if everyone was waiting with bated breath for another video blog. I just before I get into this video blog, I'd also like to add that I will be heading off to the beach for the following week, but I will still be producing video blogs while I'm at the beach. And looking at the Atlantic right now, it might be a rather interesting period of time to be on the east coast of the United States. Let's just hope that it's not too interesting. So for this segment, I am going to be focusing in on Gordon, which is presently in the Gulf of Mexico, tracking toward a landfall in Mississippi and a persistent influx of, of a high level of tropical moisture for at least the next five days into an already stormy pattern over the central U.S. But before I get into that, I'd just like to look at our hemisphere and the various centers of interest when it comes to the tropics, namely Florence, Gordon in the Gulf of Mexico here, and Olivia in the eastern Pacific. It's also worth noting that we have a, a strong tropical wave issuing off the coast of Africa, and I'm going to be talking about the longer term potential for storms in another video blog. For this video, video blog, I'm going to be talking about Gordon. So, the issue with Gordon at present, and according to the, I'm just going to go ahead and update and see if we've we've had any change in the advisory from the National Hurricane Center. So, as of 1 p.m., Gordon was a tropical storm with maximum sustained winds of 65 miles per hour, located just to the center, just to the south of the the. Florida Panhandle and tracking toward the Northwest for an expected landfall later this evening all along the Mississippi coast. Now the issue with Gordon is not so much wind and storm surge, although these impacts are, are likely to hit some of the low lying areas along the Gulf states, but it's more so an issue of, of heavy rainfall from 4 to 10 inches or more along the storm's path and flash flooding as persistent rains maintain over a, a region of Mississippi and Louisiana and along the Mississippi River Valley for, for a considerable period of time. And it's worth noting that the impacts for Gordon with regards to rainfall are not likely to be localized. I'm going to go, just go ahead and, and show you this precipitation intensity map for the next week provided by NOAA. And it's worth noting that weekly rainfall amounts are expected to range as high as 10 inches or more in a number of locations along the central U.S. as a frontal zone has tended to stall out in this region and as Gordon provides a large influx of tropical moisture into this zone. As with past storms, we've, we're expecting Gordon to move rather slowly over land once it, once it does make landfall. And unfortunately, the, the moisture package, if you were, with regards to Gordon, is expected to, to stay intact for at least the next five days. I'm just going to go ahead and show you some of the, the present issues as it relates to Gordon. So we have a, a frontal zone in association with a trough is dipping over the central U.S. at this time and ranging up into central Canada. 
Let me go ahead and advance this model so you can see where the cloud cover, this is a, a cloud cover model showing atmospheric moisture in clouds. And it's, it's a GFS based model. I'm gonna go ahead and run this model and just look at, the, at Gordon and the persistent feature of clouds for the central US. So for tomorrow, the moisture associated with Gordon and clouds association, uh, associated with Gordon is expected to be over Mississippi with this trough still dipping in through the central US. By the next day, Gordon's circulation and the moisture association associated with it has become entangled in the trough. And by September 7th, this entanglement continues over the central US, provoking an increased firing of storms, rainstorms, thunderstorms over this region day after day. So I'm just going to go ahead and, and show you the, the final frame in the forecast model, which is five days out, where we see a continuation of storms over the central U.S., even as a frontal zone dips over the mid-Atlantic states and runs out into the North Atlantic with the approach of Florence, which, which we're going to talk about a bit later. But, but just to compare... Today, with five days from now, I'm just going to go ahead and flip back to, to now. Just note that not much change over the five-day time period with storms in the same location day after day after day. And it's these persistent weather patterns which have tended to bring so much flooding rains during recent years as we've seen increased impacts from human-caused climate change. So we've got another couple of minutes. So I'm going to talk a bit more about moisture as it relates to Gordon. And we're going to flip over to total precipitable water. So this summer we've had warmer than normal sea surface temperatures in, through the Gulf of Mexico near the United States and much warmer than normal sea surface temperatures off the U.S. East Coast. As well as a persistent flow of wind blowing off the these warmer than normal waters as well as running up through the Gulf of Mexico and into the eastern section of the United States funneling a high volume of moisture over the eastern United States which is, which has led to very persistent potential for, for strong storms and during recent days we've seen some very strong storms firing over sections of, of Wisconsin as well as the central U.S. Gordon is bringing with it a large packet of tropical moisture, which is expected to reinvigorate this flow. I'm just going to go ahead and advance these frames so you can see the moisture associated with Gordon move into the central U.S., as, as well as a, a rather persistent circulation pattern. And just stick around, providing fuel for storms over this region. So by day five, we have uh, very high levels of moisture remaining over the central U.S. This due to much warmer than normal sea surface temperatures, but also due to the ability of the atmosphere, when it does warm, to, to hold more water, which is a sing signature fingerprint of human-caused climate change. Now, I'm going to talk a bit more about some dynamics as it relates to warmer than normal sea surfaces near the U.S., as well as what appears to be an Atlantic Ocean that is expected to fire off a, a number of storms in succession in a follow-on post. Thank you for joining me, and I'll be chatting with you soon.